Well, the herring, good bait. Herring's real good bait. Yeah, there. All right, good luck to you. Willie. Good boy. Come on, Pee Wee. I've been friends with these birds for 15 years. Where are you, Ahab? Ahab. Oh. Hello, buddy. Hello, buddy. Here's some egg for you. I used to be a teacher, and I've got my teacher's pets like Ahab. But I wish I could give all the birds a handout. They have such a tough time here in this urban industrial world we've built up around San Francisco Bay. That's why I'm such a big, big fan of the new habitat restoration project in the salt ponds. Those strange colored ponds in the South Bay are where the Cargill Corporation makes salt. And the colors come not from pollution, but from algae and shrimp. As the water evaporates, it gets saltier and saltier and pink brine shrimp happen to like very salty water. Cargill recently sold more than half of these ponds to the state and federal government. Over 16,000 acres in the North and South Bay. 90% of our wetlands are gone, but with this purchase we can begin to turn the tide restoring natural habitats that are good for birds, fish, and people. This is the largest habitat restoration project on the West Coast, smack dab in the middle of one of the biggest urban populations, with seven million people here in the Bay Area. In my opinion, it rivals the Everglades. Right to my right is Pond A3W. This is the pond and the water control structure that's the focus of the event today. When we open those gates, we will be releasing waters from 1,300 acres of ponds. Salt pond water now flows out to the bay here at low tide, and the bay water flows back into the pond at high tide about a mile away. Sometimes that's all you need to restore natural circulation. Just open up the tide gates and let nature take its course. That's what happened just behind the Wildlife Refuge headquarters here in Fremont. After just a few years, one of the saltiest ponds is now a tidal marsh, providing great new habitat for our endangered California clapper rail of which there are only about a thousand left in the world. But we'll keep some open water ponds too, because our shorebirds love the shallow ponds and our diving ducks like the deep ones. Some birds, like the snowy plover, like dry ponds so they can camouflage their nests. So we'll make sure some ponds dry up every spring. And maybe someday, snowy plovers won't be a threatened species anymore. I'm real fond of those little chicks. As soon as they hatch, they're ready to take on the world. I just wish they were camouflaged as well as the eggs. I worry about them getting picked off by a raven or a hawk. But if they make it through the first few days to the water's edge, they blend in better and have a real good chance. Millions of birds migrate through San Francisco Bay every year from as far away as Alaska and the tip of South America. So this restoration really benefits the entire West Coast. But we can't breach all the levees and let the tide flow back in, particularly in South San Francisco Bay, 
because we'd flood the shoreline communities. Over the years, we've pumped out so much groundwater that the earth has literally sunk. And now, towns like Alviso sit behind levees, 14 feet below sea level. In 1983, Alviso's levees failed. We can't let that happen again. But maintaining solid flood control levees also provides a place for shoreline recreation. And, like here at Charleston Slough, allows us access again to the edge of our bay. Finally, and this is close to my own heart as you might imagine, the fishing's going to get better. Watch him fly. You see that U-turn? He flies better than any bird in the world. Come on! Oh, I'll still feed Ahab and my other buddies who depend on me. But the other birds won't need a handout with 16,000 acres of new wildlife habitat. What a great gift to the future. Not only for the animals, but for our kids and grandkids.